Today, natural food stores where you turn for organic foods, vitamins, and supplements are part of the mainstream. Find out from a pioneer in the health food business why knowing what to put in your body can make a world of difference in your life. Next on Living Smart. Production funding for Living Smart with Patricia Gross is underwritten in part by Halliburton. Hello, I'm Patricia Gross. Welcome to Living Smart, the show designed to help you get the most out of life. Today's guest, entrepreneur and health food pioneer John Fain, shares with us the benefits of a natural lifestyle. Have you wondered what supplements and vitamins work for what's bothering you? He's the man to ask. What have you got for anti-aging? I'm looking for something that I can take and maybe give me some uh, extra growth hormone and testosterone. Okay. We sleep 20% less than our ancestors did. John Fain loves helping his customers. In the health food business since 1971, this non-practicing lawyer is one of the pioneers of the natural foods movement, a counterculture entrepreneur. What it really means is seeing how crazy our culture really is and how uh, programmed we are by the media, by the government, by all these forces out there that want to lead us around uh, and lead us away from probably a more uh, healthy, happy existence. The health food thing at the time was... uh, Organic food, back to the land, raise your own food, eat local food, stay away from processed food. He and his partners named it a movable feast after Hemingway's only nonfiction book. It's about his experiences in Paris during the 20s when he decided to leave America. And they decided that something was going wrong with society, just like uh, we felt like. So a movable feast became a symbol for that. It became a little island of alternative thought, if you will, and that revolved around food. Let's eat different. Let's, let's eat different. That's the way to be different. For the next three decades, the movable fee store kept moving to four different locations, and during those years, the dialogue with customers changed drastically. Uh, one remark I remember hearing was uh, somebody wandered in there, was looking around, they said, gee, do you people really eat this stuff? You know, I mean, it's like... They couldn't believe that someone would actually eat yogurt or bean sprouts. Bain takes his own share of vitamins daily, shares them with his cat, and through him, keeps himself centered on his own life philosophy. Here's your vitamin. You have to start it off for him there. Pets are like a little bit of nature that you can sort of have around you and just kind of watch how they behave, and see what they do. They, they're totally natural, and that's, uh, that's what I want to be is totally natural. So I kind of learn from them. Yeah, you got it. Besides books and cats, John learns key lessons from business and lifetime partner wife Suzanne, who joined him in the store in 1977 and is now the executive chef of its natural cafe. In 1984, Whole Foods moved into the neighborhood, and it was in part the natural food restaurant concept that kept them in business. I took the meatloaf off for the everyday. We realized very quickly that was going to help distinguish us from Whole Foods because that was something that they did not offer. They had a deli counter, but they didn't really have a restaurant where you could sit down and eat. So that that was very much in our favor, too. An ex-hippie, Fain remembers the positive aspects of the counterculture that created a place like Movable Feast. Music was a very big influence on me. Uh, Rock and roll, uh, folk music, Bob Dylan. Bob Dylan is my poet icon. Uh, He is a person to me that uh, always 
had that natural center that he always followed. Comes in a 500 milligram uh, capsule. Okay. True to what he loves, he spends a lot of time teaching, advising, suggesting, but he'd rather people ask their own questions. People have to take responsibility for their own health. It seems like most people just want that part of their life to be on automatic. They just want to do whatever is easy and convenient, and that's, to me, a big mistake because that's the most important part of your life. John Fain, thank you so much for joining us. We have oh. so much to learn from you. <laughs> um, before you became a health food pioneer, what, what made you think about eating healthy foods? Well, I guess it goes back to my mother and mom's cooking. And she always told us, don't eat what you like, eat what's good for you. Uh -huh. And eat your greens, eat your uh, veggies. And So you got that from mom. Now, yeah. what did you learn about healthy foods? Because then you got really interested in it. Well, I got interested in it because I started hearing about this thing called health food. And I uh, started seeing health food stores. I'd go to the uh, mall with my mom, and uh, I'd look around, and I'd see these stores with, that had a lot of pills in there right. and uh, strange jars full of powders and whatever. And I wonder, what is that stuff? What, what makes that health food? Why is that different from right. what everybody else eats? So uh, it's, it started a curiosity going in me, I guess, and it's just something I pursued. When you, were, when you were curious about that, were you learning what not to eat? Yes. Uh, that took a little longer, I think, that process. But yes, uh, definitely. I, I started realizing that uh, too much fat, greasy food, uh, sugar, uh, white flour, things like that were not... Good not for health you. food and not, not good for you. And could lead processed to processed foods, in other words. Processed yeah. foods, yes. And sugars and flowers. Mm -hmm. Now, why is it, let's, let's explain what is organic foods and why is it better, supposedly, to eat organic foods? What does it mean exactly? It means, in the way that it was intended to be, food that's raised without chemical pesticides okay. or chemical fertilizers. In other words, food that's raised the way nature intended on the soil. Uh, with the sunlight and the water, and the fertilizer is provided by naturally composted material, not by chemicals. Now, it tends to be more expensive. Why is it more expensive? You'd think that with chemicals, you, you'd spend more money with, if you were using chemicals, but no, organic foods tend to be more expensive than regular foods. That is true because, uh, in effect, regular foods are being subsidized, if you will, by uh, the input of tremendous amounts of uh, fossil fuel energy. Mm -hmm. uh, that's where the chemicals come from, to make the fertilizers and to make the uh, pesticides. And all of this is being uh, substituted for the energy of the sun and the soil. So instead of having uh, growing seasons and having uh, things done according to the way nature intended, right. we're shortcutting the process. Okay. And it seems cheaper right now. But what we're doing is robbing the future. Okay. We're robbing the future for a cheap source of food right what now. What do you mean by that? Well, we're destroying our soil. Okay. We're destroying our water. We're uh, killing off uh, species of animals, insects, birds. Uh, this is all a consequence of the so-called agricultural revolution. Mm -hmm. It's produced tremendous bounty of cheap food, uh -huh. but it's also having devastating consequences on the environment. It's not helping us either as, as humans, I think, to eat processed foods. This is true. What are some of the questions, John, people need to ask themselves before they go shopping for organic foods? I mean, do, are we supposed to believe when they say this is organic? We're supposed to believe it's organic. Is it always that way? What are some of the questions we need to ask? Okay, well, that's a very good point because uh, just recently there have been some cases reported of the major grocery stores. I'm not going to mention any names, but uh, actually offering for sale items marked organic that have been proven to be not organic. They're mm -hmm. commercially raised produce. produce. Mm -hmm. So that's the first question you've got to ask yourself. Uh, is this really organic? Was this stuff really raised without pesticides and fertilizers? Is the price a little too good to be true? Mm -hmm. uh, who is this store that's offering me this? Do they have integrity? Can I right. believe who, what they say? 
Right. Uh, let's talk about, um, you know, when we talk about organic foods, obviously we want to eat organic foods because it's healthier for us. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a process that we're just learning about. It's called acidemia. Mm -hmm. And it, I want you to explain that and how that relates to chronic disease. And it okay. has to do with what we eat. Yes, indeed it does. What that refers to is the fact that uh, when we eat processed foods, when we eat uh, too much refined sugar, white flour, uh, too much uh, of anything that's refined and processed, it, it has a slightly acidifying effect on our blood. The blood has to be very carefully uh, balanced between acid and alkaline. It has, it has to be very neutral. And if it goes over a little bit to the acid side, it can lead to all kinds of problems, arthritis, diabetes, cancer, heart disease. Everything can come from that because it sets up a cycle of inflammation in the body. Okay. So what, what should we do in that case to avoid the inflammation, which apparently most chronic diseases are caused by inflammation. That's the right? new thinking. That is correct. Yes. So, so let's talk about uh, what types of foods should we be eating and, and to, if we have too much acidity in our bodies, which mm -hmm. I don't know how you would know that. I guess if you're sick, what should you yeah. start incorporating into your diet? Start incorporating fresh foods, especially green foods. Okay. Uh, start eating your uh, kale and your chard and spinach and, and greens of uh, uh, vegetables, even cooked vegetables. Mm -hmm. uh, stay away from the uh, a lot of bread and uh, desserts, pastries, uh, anything like that, cookies, etc. What about lemon water and uh, apple vinegar, apple cider oh, vinegar yeah. for uh, to undermine acidity? Yeah, these acidity. are these are well known folk cures. I guess you'd say they've been around for a long time. Uh, a little bit of Apple cider vinegar. Now, you have to use the natural apple vinegar, cider, right, not, right. not the white vinegar that you okay. buy in the store, but the apple cider vinegar. Put a little bit of that in some water mm -hmm. and drink that in the morning or drink that uh, after every meal. Okay. That's a very good alkalizer. It also helps you digest your food, too. Interesting. What about mm -hmm. um, lemon water? Lemon All water. Day? Lemon water as well. Lemon water, especially to start your day in the morning. Okay. That's very good. I heard that kind of cleanses you, detoxifies you, right? Yes, it does. It's very helpful. Is it half a lemon or a whole lemon to put in, in? I would just do it according to your taste. Okay. You know, if it's too sour for you, then, then back lemon. off a little okay. bit. Yeah. Uh, let's talk about, you know, most people want to, let's talk first of all about colds because uh, things have come out recently, zinc and vitamin D and information on that. Tell me about mm -hmm. that and what should we know about preventing colds or, or if we feel a cold coming, what can we do? Well, people wonder, you know, why are there so many colds uh, in the winter? Why do we uh, all seem to come down with these little sniffles and sinus problems, especially when the weather's been like it has been lately here? Sure. Uh, it's not really because there's more uh, germs. virus or germs mm -hmm. in the air. It's not because we're more packed together, crowded together. It's probably because we're not getting the amount of vitamin D that we're used to. We're on a precarious uh, situation with vitamin D anyway. Most people in the modern lifestyle don't get enough vitamin D because we're inside all the time. We Where don't do we get, get exposed it from to the, the sun? sun. It comes from the sun, exposure to the skin. Okay. And uh, if you uh, are a type of person like I am that works indoors all the time, most people are, you do, you're not getting enough. any vitamin D. You're not getting enough vitamin D. Okay. Uh, so the thing to do is supplement your vitamin D. And don't be afraid to take vitamin D. Can we get it in food? You can, uh, but it's mostly from uh, fish liver oil. Fish liver Cod oil. Liver okay, oil. and we'll Cod talk about that. Cod liver oil is the best source of vitamin D. Cod liver oil. Yes. Uh, what about zinc for, to prevent colds? Zinc is good for your immune system. Zinc will uh, sort of strengthen tone up it, your immune it system, stre strengthen it. And are there any foods we can eat with that have a lot of zinc in them? Uh, there are certain foods that do have a lot of zinc. Pumpkin seeds, for instance, okay. contain a lot of zinc. Um, you've got to watch it with zinc supplements. Now, that's one case where you don't want to take too much. Okay. If you take too much zinc, it can actually make you too alkaline. It can upset your stomach and give you a real bad uh, stomach ache. So, so you find out if you're taking too much zinc if you, you start getting it. a stomach ache. You know you it just real know quick. You just feel kind of... Oh, you'll feel, okay. <laughs> you'll feel a sharp pain if you take too much zinc. Okay. It's not good to take too much zinc. In fact, it can have the opposite effect. If you take too much every day... 
it can actually lower your immune system. It all goes back to balance, right? Every I mean, it all goes back to balance. <laughs> exactly. Balance yeah. is the key. Balance is the key. Okay, yeah. let's talk about weight loss because everybody wants to know, why don't, you know, the, the magic pill, I'm going to take the pill so I don't have to, <laughs> I can eat everything I want yeah, and I yeah, don't have yeah. to exercise. Yeah. But let's talk about weight loss products. For example, what's been out there mostly is stimulants, right? How do those work and popular. how healthy are they? They're not healthy. They're not uh, really recommended. That's not a good way to try to, to lose, lose weight. weight. I'm not saying that they should be banned. I mean, that's another topic entirely. Stimulants have their place. And if they're wisely used, that they do serve a function. But for weight loss, the, the answer is very simple. Stop eating the refined foods. Stop eating more calories than you can burn off. Right. That's right. why people are overweight nowadays. They're eating too much refined food. Okay. They're just eating too many calories. There are some supplements that people can use that are that are very well known, like chromium picolinate. Tell me about that one. How does it work? Because yeah. supplements don't, don't supplements work on the brain, on the, on the neurological system, not on the you know not on the uh, other part, parts of the body. Well, of course, the body is all one thing. You know, I, I, you, you, the brain and the body are really they're all related. We're all they're, related. It's all one system. So. But you're right, uh, supplements uh, like chromium picolinate can have an effect on your uh, physiology, your uh, appearance. They're good for uh, keeping your muscle mass okay. up, keeping your body lean, uh, keeping your uh, uh, glucose tolerance high. Uh, people, by eating too much refined food and eating too much uh, uh, high glycemic food, can destroy their glucose tolerance. You continually bombard your body with these uh, refined carbohydrates, and pretty soon your insulin response quits working, and that's right. called type 2 diabetes. Right. Right. So chromium is a very good thing to, to control uh, help, that, that, help the, prevent the that. Yes. Uh, let's talk about Hudia, because that's another supplement that people are using to lose weight. Right. What is it? It's actually a cactus. It's okay. a cactus from uh, South Africa. And uh, it's interesting, cactus is found in a lot of different uh, desert cultures. Mm -hmm. In fact, our own southwest uh, culture here in the United States, they eat a lot of cactus. Uh, it has the effect of stabilizing blood sugar, mm -hmm. which can affect your appetite, keep your appetite more on an even keel, re reduce your cravings for carbohydrates. Uh, it also seems to have an effect on the appetite uh, mechanism in your brain, like you're talking about, your satiety uh, mechanism that tells you when you're full. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. it, it, it is helpful. Most people don't take enough hudia because you can imagine if you're uh, eating cactus, uh, you've got to eat a, a pretty lot. good piece of cactus, you know, yeah. You've got to eat a that lot. That sounds to, a painful. To have an effect. Yeah, be careful with the cactus. Now let's talk about soy. That seems to be a controversial uh, uh, product now. At first it was, it was wonderful, it was magical, and now, wait a minute, it may cause breast cancer. You know, what are we supposed to know about soy? Yeah. Well, soy is a good food. It's a, it's a bean, it's a legume. Uh, and beans are kind of hard to digest, and that's probably soy's biggest problem. Okay, digestion. It's very hard to digest. It can give people gas. And it also is very hard on the thyroid gland. If people are uh, subpar on their thyroid level, if you're a little bit hypothyroid, you should probably eat little or no soy. Okay. Because it does affect your thyroid. Now, as far as the cancer thing goes, doctors are telling women if you have a risk of breast cancer or if you've had breast cancer, you probably shouldn't eat soy. Mm -hmm. The reason they're afraid of this is because it, soy has a uh, estrogenic constituent in it. Okay. It's, it has a property like estrogen. And a lot of women have had breast cancer that's caused by too much estrogen. So they're afraid that that might augment that or make mm -hmm. that worse in some way. But I still think soy overall... If you get natural soy, not the genetically modified right, soy, right. but natural soy prepared in the traditional ways like with tofu, uh, tofu, miso, things like that that have been developed over thousands of years, who knows, uh, by Asian people mainly, uh, this is good for your health. In fact, it, studies show that they have uh, less cardiovascular disease mm -hmm. and they have uh, less cancer, That's because, right. probably because they eat more soy. And they also drink more green tea. Tell me about green tea. Oh, yeah. Green tea is wonderful. Green tea is very high in something called uh, polyphenols. Polyphenols are uh, 
antioxidants, very strong antioxidants. And they also have an anti-inflammatory effect, like we were saying before. So for anything that's causing inflammation in your body, green tea or polyphenol-rich foods, which are, are a lot of uh, fruits and uh, vegetables contain polyphenols as well. Those things can help quiet inflammation in the body and also uh, help with uh, uh, your antioxidant effect as well. Right. well. You know, I've been told also that uh, to, tr to substitute coffee for green tea would help me lose weight. I don't know if that's true or not, but what are your thoughts on caffeine? Caffeine, I think, is okay in moderation. I mm -hmm. enjoy caffeine in the morning. I think it's a question of balance. A lot of people overdo caffeine. They use caffeine as a source for energy and motivation when they should be uh, getting a good night's rest right, right. and using other techniques to reduce their stress so that they have a natural energy and enthusiasm for life instead of relying on stimulants. Too many right. people rely on stimulants. But having said that, a little caffeine is great in the morning to get you going and, and mm -hmm. really... But don't uh, overdo it. Just don't overdo it. Yeah. Let's talk about calcium. Now, we hear that calcium is great, especially for women, you know, to prevent osteoporosis. But there are some things we need to know about calcium, like absorption and how do we take it, mm -hmm. right? That's true. Calcium by itself is not the answer for osteoporosis, especially taking a lot of calcium. That's just, that's not smart. You may be able to get a rise in your blood level of calcium, but that's not where you want the calcium to go. You want the calcium to go to your bones and your teeth to try to uh, maintain a strong skeletal structure. Uh -huh. uh, women particularly are at risk more than men are for osteoporosis, although men tend to get it too in, in later years. The best defense against that is exercise, weight-bearing exercise particularly, walking, lifting some light weights, uh, doing some uh, uh, little weight-type exercise. What, what about taking calcium? Aren't you supposed to take calcium with magnesium? Yes. Always. Calcium with magnesium. Always. Always. You can't take it alone. The more magnesium and you take... And why is that? Well, it, magnesium sort of opens the door for calcium to get into the bones. To get absorbed. Exactly. You know, that's a, that's a really good question, which is sometimes could we possibly be taking too many supplements, too many vitamins that we are not absorbing because we don't know what we're doing mixing all these different supplements and vitamins? Is there such thing as too much? I suppose so. I think most people err on the side of too little. Okay. Um, I mean, we're finding out lately that... Uh, what we had thought of were the upper limits on vitamin D, for instance, that you mentioned before, vitamin D and vitamin A, which everybody was so afraid of. Those limits that we imposed on it are way too low. Mm -hmm. And it's made people scared to take vitamin A and vitamin D. They're afraid they're going to get uh, poisoned by it. Uh, actually, the very reverse is true. Uh, people need more A. They need more D, especially D, like we were talking about, to get mm -hmm. your immunity up. Right, right. Vitamin A for your skin, your hair. Uh, for your immune system as well, all that stuff. It's very important. So I don't think there's much danger of that. I think that if people would just take uh, an extra supplement every day, uh, they'll be much better off than what they were before. Now, of course, if we ate well, we shouldn't have to take supplements, right? But we don't eat very well enough. That's true. Uh, and I don't know that, it, that you could eat well enough. Mm -hmm. Uh, human beings are strange uh, creatures. We all want to always want to do a little bit better, and uh, I think that supplements will give you the opportunity to maintain a more uh, vigorous lifestyle, uh, stay free of uh, the degenerative diseases that probably our parents and grandparents right, suffered. Right. I think this is one thing that we can put uh, modern science to good use for. Complex B. Now, we talked about stress and how important Complex B is. Mm -hmm. But I've heard that Complex B vitamins should, should be taken as liquid as opposed to pills. What do you know about this? Well, I don't think that's so important. I mean, liquids, it's true, do get in your system quicker. A little, you know, maybe a few seconds faster because they're already liquefied. A pill or a capsule is going to have to go into your stomach and be right, digested and, and then go into the bloodstream. But B-complex is very important for your carbohydrate metabolism, for your nerves, for so many different things. Uh, folic acid, for instance, uh, could probably prevent a lot of the uh, cardiovascular disease we have okay. in this country. A lot of people need extra folic acid. How do you know you're living smart? My gut tells me. 
<laughs> Literally. Uh, I think that uh, the wisdom of the gut is the best way to go. Uh, don't use your head too much. Don't depend on your, on your so-called uh, intellectual knowledge. Go with what your gut tells you. And you can't and, go and man who listens to intuition. Thank you so much, John Fain. We really appreciate you coming. My pleasure. Here. Thank Betty. you. Thank you. And you can learn more about John Fain by going to our website, HoustonPBS.org slash Living Smart. There you'll also find a complete resource list and feel free to share your own views on the subject of natural foods and supplements. You can call us with your comments at 713 713- Seven four three eight five one three. That's seven one three seven four three eight five one three. Or email livingsmart at houstonpbs dot org. And that's our show for today. I hope you've enjoyed it. Remember to live smart and eat healthy. I'm Patricia Gross. Have a great week. Production funding for Living Smart with Patricia Gross is underwritten in part by Halliburton. For a transcript of this program, send 695 to the address on your screen. Please include the name of the guest. 